Why don't we talk now about um, Allende's government in Chile? Can you talk kind of about the wider context of this? And I've heard you say before that, you know, in some ways his government was even more of a threat to the United States than maybe even so Cuba. Can you talk about, you know, why did what Allende represented, why was that such a threat to uh, sure. U.S. interests? Allende was an old time politician in Cuba. He had, I mean, in Chile, he had ran for president three times prior to winning his fourth time. He had, he, he was first elected as a representative in, in, in the house of, in the assembly, the equivalent of the house of representatives in the 1930s on with very limited suffrage, only property white men could vote. He, you know, he, he ran something, he won something like all without a thousand votes. He was a member of the socialist party. He was a, uh, you know, Chile had always had a kind of ecumenical left. There were socialists, there was anarchists, there were communists, but they always tried to tend to work with each other for different reasons. But um, uh, and and you could you could tra you could trace the history of Allende's uh, rise and understand the tight relationship between political and social democracy, where it was where. With Cuban uh, Chileans didn't see the difference between one or the other in their minds. It was they were inextricably linked to expand social democracy. Say the right to the, the right to education, which would increase literacy, would increase the number of voters, and 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 hence the voting pop the number of people who voted for Allende and the Socialist Party and the Communist Party, and whatnot. And you could you could understand that whatever the growing growing in the voting roles uh, through the expansion of social democracy continued throughout the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, leading to Allende's election in 1970s. Allende is a good example of, of the kind of, um, you know, of, of a socialist working through the state to expand social welfare. He was a medical doctor and for a brief time he served as the ministry of minister of health and he put into place one of chile's chile's uh, first uh, first national health care paying particular attention to prenatal health and children's nutrition so there was a way in which social democracy and social and the, and the state as a provision of social care and the expansion of political democracy went hand in hand so he was a threat in the sense that he represented that long history He's in, it was a threat in another way that when he was elected in 1970, at the height of the of, of the Cold War, with the United States bogged down in Vietnam, with Kissinger trying to extricate the United States from Vietnam by 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 negotiating with the Soviet Union spheres of influence under detente, and um, you know the per first person to make this argument was Cy Hirsch, that you know in his book on Kissinger, he said you know. Allende was a threat, not because Kissinger thought that Allende wouldn't give up power after his six-year term, but because that he would. He would prove that he would prove that Marxism and political democracy were compatible. Um, and and you know, it's easy to discredit and isolate and and quarantine somebody like Castro. You can certainly justify them historically, you know, as I just did when, 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 you know, when you look at Guatemala and, and, and you, and, and, and you recall that Che uh, justified the shutting down of, of political pluralism by, by, by pointing to the, the way the United States manipulated political pluralism to destabilize uh, a Guatemalan society. But, um, but, but, but it was, would be also fairly easy to say that, you know, Castro's a dictator. He's this. He's that. You can't. You couldn't say that about Allende. And and, um, and the threat also echoed in Europe, where Euro communism was on the rise, uh, in Portugal, in, in in Italy, in which um, in which the the post war arrangement in which in which um, in which communist parties would play a minor role. In, 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 in a broadly center left government governmental coalition was starting to give way to the notion that communists might actually lead these coalitions, you know, as they grew in popularity. And that was Euro communism. And, uh, and so the strike against the yen day in 73, the, 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 you know, the, the coup against the yen day CIA led Brazil brokered, um, uh, with plenty of domestic support, was as much a strike against that kind of that that general form of Euro communism as it was against the Yende. It was also a blow against the new international economic order because the Yende uh, represented 
in many ways the, the that emerging critique of uh, of world capitalism as as Keynesianism was 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 about on the threshold of entering its decline um, in the, in the late sixties and the early seventies. Uh, third world nations got together and, and came up with an alternative, the new international economic order. And one of them, one of the principles of that order was the right to nationalize, right? The right of countries to have. Now, the United States sort of recognized the right of countries to nationalize foreign policy with just compensation going at least back to the Mexican Revolution. But one of the things that Allende did and the popular unity the government did was that they they expanded the right of nationalization. They 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 came up with this idea of something called the doctrine of excess profits, where they would use some mathematical formulation to find out to 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 tab tabulate how much money a country extracted unjustly during that time of operation a uh, company extracted unjustly from a country during their times of operation. So Allende's government didn't just nationalize Anaconda, Anaconda and, 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 and Kennecott mining companies and international telephone and telegraph. They did the math and then and then they deducted what they deducted what they said was excess profit from the compensation, which usually resulted in handing a bill to these kind. I think I think Kennecott, <laughs> I think the Allende government said Kennecott not only lost its holdings but owed Chile another seven hundred million dollars. That was <laughs> for the rate for the Nixon administration and for John Connolly, the Secretary of Treasury. That was a step too far. I mean, Mexico and Pemex was one thing, but this was just going too far, especially on the eve of. Of, of the first world having to move away from Keynesianism into what we generally know as neoliberalism. And so that was one of the threats and, and one, of the, one of the reasons why, why I, I think Allende had to go and, and, and he did go. I want to fast forward to today um, and ask about the recent resurgence of sorts of the pink tide, which had been kind of in, in retreat for, for a while you know, with Pedro Castillo in Peru, Arce in Bolivia, and possibly even, um, I mean, AMLO in Mexico, obviously, but obviously possibly even a return of Lula in Brazil. Um, can you talk about the the sort of resilience of the Latin American left in an era where it seems like the left is, is in retreat everywhere else? Yeah, well, the resilience... I mean, to step back and talk on a, on a more meta level, the resilience of Latin American social democracy is impressive. I mean, uh, there's no country in the world in which social democracy and socialism has had deeper or, organic roots. I mean, you, you think about the repression and, and disappointment and frustration. You know, you know, Albert Hirschman has that great book about, you know, the camp of reaction, you know, basically jeopardy, fertility and, and perversity are the three, um, three reasons that conservatives give for why change could never happen. And Latin America suffered them in, 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 uh, in 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 you know in 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 uh, suffered those three things and you know over and over again. I mean you know the, you know the, if you need any proof that socialism was impossible, like you know, just look at Latin America, all of the coups, it was a combination of elites and and the United States would never let it happen. But it keeps coming back, right? I mean they wiped out a generation of economic nationalists in the nineteen seventies. There are hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, displaced. I mean, the whole social base of what became of what was the socialist movement was destroyed in the 1970s and 1980s, and um, you know, hundreds, you know, millions of people, and and yet, yet it just proves impossible to squash the 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 social democratic ideal understood in its broadest sense, or the democratic socialist ideal. You know, I'm not, I don't mean by using those terms, I don't, I don't mean to enter into any controversy about. Democracy, so democratic socialism, or social democracy. I'm just generally referring to an ideal in which in which um, uh, citizen rights entails a degree of individual freedom and some form of social and economic justice and social solidarity. I mean, look at Chile. Like Chile, you know, Patricio Guzman, a great filmmaker, a great documentary. He made this wonderful documentary, The Battle of Chile, that documented the overthrow of Chile, three parts. It's a classic, classic text of new left uh, uh, cinema, documentary cinema. He went back in the early 1990s and he showed it to Chile. 
Jones, and he made a documentary of that show and called it which called Obstinate Memory. And the you know the the documentary had a, a that documentary had a thesis that neoliberalism was so triumphant it had erased the memory of solidarity mm. in the past. It had turned you know social democratic citizens into into neoliberal citizens. You know, and turned them into you know autonomous atomistic you know isolates that that you know that understood uh, themselves as consumers and not citizens. They you know, and when shown images of of of, of a past of solidarity, they couldn't they couldn't reckon. And you know, Patrick Singh Guzman is is one of the greatest filmmakers in the world, but his thesis was wrong. You know, I mean, if any country, look at Chile, you know, like, you know, it, the constant, like now, now we're in, we're well into two decades of a social movement that has transformed Chile. And, and not just, I mean, can you even imagine a social, a, a, can you imagine a student, student movement in the United States in that, that framed its political struggles by, by invoking fights that happened 30 or 40 years ago. I mean, that could frame it in terms of Pinochet and Keynes and Friedman and Allende and, and, and you know, and, and, you know, and understand and, and, and carry placards that say things like, you know, neoliberalism, you know, rule, you just, you know, neoliberals command, you obey, and, you know, and, and understand that their project is to de neoliberalize the society. But it's not just that. What also happens in Chile, what's also been happening in Chile, it's, it's expanding. Chile, Chile is a kind of European country that's deeply racist, that has denied that it's been a settler colonial society. And you see that changing. You see the incorporation of indigenous peoples that you know that that you know maybe have a different uh, uh, history of of struggle than the one that we would associate with it, the rise of Allende and the overthrow of Allende. And their incorporate oh, indigenous woman is the head of the constitutional assembly that's going to rewrite a, a you know Chile's new new constitution that's going to overturn a constitution that was literally modeled on. On, on on von Hayek's Constitution and Liberty, which was meant to hamstring hamstring the government and 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 you know and 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 uh, and, um, and prevent the kind of errors that led to the social democracy of the Allende period. So there is a um, you know I mean things happen. Politicians betray. Uh, you know uh, you know there are there are certainly a social base for less humanistic social, less humanistic, more brutal movements. You know, the drug war, paramilitaries, the rise of uh, evangelical style politics in, 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 in Latin America. But at the same time, the endurance of a kind of social democratic ideal in one country after another um, is, 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 you know, it's, 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 it's impressive. And, and to be very specific about Bolivia, if when we look back at this current moment, Bolivia, I mean, that coup had the support of Colombia, it had the support of Macri's intelligence organizations, it had massive support from different civil, right-wing civil sectors in the United States, if not the Trump administration itself. And the fact that they were over, to overturn that coup and 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 uh, in a massive way, in a massive way that repudiated it completely, and that is now holding the people accountable, you know, yeah. in totally and totally with with due process and legal rights, but holding them accountable, is is remarkable. In, in considering the 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 consolidation of right wing authoritarianism elsewhere, and yes, and it is linked, I think, to a to what's going on in Chile. Elections coming up in Colombia. It's a little hard to say what it all means right so the last new left which wasn't that long ago that you know right chavez's election lula's election then you know the kirchner's in argentina then evo morales in bolivia and then you know and another is that the the, co the project there was coherent chavez would use oil rents to 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 kind of to kind of revitalize the new international economic order and create a petro solidarity uh, 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 foreign policy. Uh, Brazil would, uh, Lula would ground Brazil, the, the hemisphere's largest economy other than the United States, to create a new center of balance from the United States. Brazil and Chile would work together. They would work with BRIC countries to create alternatives to, you know, to, to, to U.S. power. 
And we could talk about the many ways that Lula did that in terms of trying to, you know, trying to wean Brazil off the dollar, try, refusing to sign on to these kind of uh, uh, security initiatives that came out of the war on terror. And, uh, and that, that project was coherent. It failed. And it, and it failed for a lot of reasons, and we can rehearse that history. But I do think we are in this moment of of, of a return of of a of a new new left, and and um, and we'll see we'll see um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with the elections in in Chile uh, later this year, where where uh, Daniel uh, Uke, I think is the head of the Communist Party, is uh, is polling in, in number one, and already. You're seeing a campaign against him that they did against Corbyn, where they're going to try to smear him with anti-Semitism because of mm. his anti-Zionism. He's a playbook, he has, man. What? It worked. It, it worked. You it gotta, worked. You and and they've already again. started. Look at the Harit the Harit's article. They, they, you know, uh, were progressive Chileans, and we, you know, and 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 um, and uh, I can't remember his last name. Ju Juke, I think, is the uh, Danielle. He, he come. He come. There's a large community of Palestinian Chile in Palestinians in Chile the, and and he's one of them and um, I mean and and so the, you know they're trying to smear him with with anti they're tr probably trying to a Corbin on him because he's because he's popular and he's leading in the polls so, so we'll see we'll see what happens yeah. so real quick one last question you've been very generous with your time but oh. so far how would you assess Biden you know his approach towards Latin America is he kind of just Recreating the uh, the workshop. Oh, it's perfect. He's been perfect. Oh, right. That's right. I'm sorry. He's, uh, yeah, he's been revolutionary. He's been transformative. He's been revolutionary. Yeah, he's been. He has been building. Yeah, it's unbelievable. He's, he's yeah. He's no. I mean, you know, you know. I mean, the United States is such a mess. Uh, economy doesn't doesn't hold. You know, understands why you don't want to take on Latin America, but I, th I thought, I thought he would reverse Trump's reversal of of the normalization with Cuban, with Cuba, but that didn't happen. Uh, it's amazing the hold of, of the Cuban uh, a vote on on Florida and and the ongoing power of of, of uh, you know these marginal voters on 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 you know just w hoping to win the electoral votes of Florida. It's mind boggling. He's, you know, so he hasn't really been good on Cuba. He's, he hasn't been good on distributing vaccines. He's been horrible on Venezuela. He's continued Trump's policies on Venezuela. Um, he hasn't, and this is, I think, uh, you know, this is, an, this is an existential policy that has to do with all of the Americas, if not all the world. He hasn't kind of united the countries behind a shared vision of, 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 of a response to climate change, especially considering you know the way the West is getting battered, and the way and the way certain other countries in in Latin America are getting battered by extreme weather. Um, so, I mean, part of me understands he's up he's up against so much, and much of what he's up against he himself created. But that's another. But, <laughs> but that's another. But that's an. You know, that would be the that would be the story that he was able to you know defeat the monster that he created. But I, you know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, 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 like I, just, a good movie. I just think if he signs a few more good progressive executive actions and, and, and that, and the Republicans don't get the house, I, I, I think we can, I don't know. Yeah. So basically, yeah, he's been perfect. Basically. He's been perfect. <laughs> Yeah, it's been perfect. Kamala Harris went to Guatemala and you know told yeah told, gave him yeah gave, I, I don't know what piece of her mind. That. I mean I, 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 that was that was mean. I mean that was just like that was very mean. Take, you know like and then next thing I was unbelievable I, because so I don't know what what's the plan is Biden going to run for re-election and or is, is, is are they setting up they're certainly not setting up Harris they seem to be under no they're they're leaving her out to dry they're making I her know. go to the border so is, and so yeah. what's the implication that she's not going to seek the nomination or that or that or no, that Biden, Biden, I think I Biden think, um, again no one no one, no one gives yes of course no one no one gives up that seat of like you know I only think Lyndon um Johnson actually that, Juan Guaido is gonna run I, I heard yeah, that I, I, gonna I, gonna point. I think yeah Bolivia is gonna appoint him president yeah <laughs> yeah exactly um, <laughs> that'd be cool no I mean if I if I had one wish like if a genie granted me one wish I mean obviously and I had to rule out like world peace and you know ending hunger and poverty and all that stuff I would want to witness a conversation between Kamala Harris and her Marxist father, father about, yeah. like any of this shit you know like yeah. what is 
you know, how is that conversation go down? Like what yeah. I, I just I need to see that. I need to witness <laughs> it. That's just my my one dream. Yeah, yeah. We or yeah. even better, her Marxist dad and then Buttigieg's Marxist whatever uncle or something. Yeah, uh, and then father and then, also. And then Obama's thought, yeah, then getting together Kenyan developmentalist economist and right, yeah. Then yeah. getting together in a bar and just uh complaining about and the millibands. The millibands could be there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, talk <laughs> about daddy issues. Jesus Christ. Like, that's just, you know, like, I know you want to rebel against dad, but like becoming vice president and, and, and 